Welcome to the Back Row Fantasy Show with your hosts, Jeremy Barker, Aaron Arms, and Chad Niddle. Hey, hey, how's everybody doing? It's another episode of the Back Row Fantasy Show with me, myself, Bark to my left is arms. Good morning. And my right is a very irate knit. I'm not irate. Well, I'm a little irate, but you don't know why. It's because you always cut it off right when the like the da, 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 the the drum beat starts kicking in. You cut it off. Like it's just I don't cut it off. I just start talking, and it's like that's when I get into it. And then you're like, "Hey, welcome to the back row fan," and you ruin it. You want me to wait till the music's all the way over from now on? You yes, you ruined my vibes. Okay, I'm just I will you. wait till the music is nah. all the way over. I'm kidding. I love you, dude. You got a good. Got I a good love one. you. I love you. I'm yeah, sad. you you've been showing nothing but love this evening. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for joining us. We're going to talk some week eleven, some not so obvious start sits. Or hits, as Nit likes to call me, likes to just mess with everything. Yeah, just literally <laughs> just ruin what we're trying to do. I like just, to call uh, them, st- we're going to do studs and duds this week. Yeah, turn your microphone towards your mouth. It, Love you. Hold it, up. Ooh. Oh. That's, okay. Turn Lip it. biscuit. You don't think I've tried to do Method that? Method man. Times? Lip biscuit. There you go. Sorry right. for the technical difficulty, folks. Sometimes you got to be smarter than the boom arm, Nit. Dude, you're right. Yep. All right. All right, well, let's get into a little technical difficulty there. Oh, yeah. You may have heard a little muffled, you know, a little bit of muffled stuff there just like that. And uh, that trash can is full. It needs emptied. I shall empty that. And, and, and yeah, how, how's it going? Everybody ready to talk about some football? It's week 11. We are definitely over the halfway point of the season now. Amen. Amen. We're we're already for some off season. Uh, <laughs> not not because the season's not great. Only in about half my leagues. I <laughs> love fantasy football. I'm doing fine in fantasy football. I, just, I like talking about things that don't happen tomorrow, though. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah, I want to talk about things that are months away. I love talking about the draft. I love talking about who we're buying before the season starts. Maybe we should just do like a draft podcast and just kind of stop after that. <laughs> It's so much fun. Yeah, the Backer Fantasy Show now coming to you February through August. And and that's it. And that's it. You got to, but we're trying to keep momentum, you know? I'm not ashamed of missing on picks. It's nothing like that. It's just to cram every, we can't, we cannot possibly cram in what we want to cram in. I mean, you're, anybody who sticks with us, you're listening to an hour plus show. And that's with us going like 25% deep, only giving her a quarter of it. So in other words, <laughs> you know, if y'all start using our sponsor links, we might be able to do a little bit more. Very possible. Hey, I'm glad you said that. Sponsor? We, what? We have a new sponsor. And uh, I also don't let me forget to, to throw out our current sponsor in the middle of the show. But we do have a new sponsor. It is Seat Giant. SeatGiant.com. This is a site that you can go to if you missed out on those Eric Church tickets. <laughs> Nip. Nip if still you, owes me for Eric if Church If you tickets, missed out you. on those uh, uh, what's Trans-Siberian Orchestra tickets for Christmas, if you missed out on them. Some other terrible band slash country. Right. If you missed out on those U2 <laughs> tickets. or Dude, those, just tell me you don't want them. I'll sell them to somebody else. We're, me and Arms are about to have an on-air conflict during no, an man. advertisement for our show. Right. I'm oh, sorry. So You're good. Seat Giant. This isn't a very professional. This is this is not one of those deals where they're like, listen. So base, w- explain how it works real quick. Sorry. It, it's all good because they're not just calling the shots. They're like, here's a promo code. Toss it out there. Reel in some fish and see if you can do the old, I got you a dollar. <laughs> I got you a dollar. I, I go, got to be quicker than that. Ooh, okay, so Seat Giant, you can go online, SeatGiant.com, search for any artist, venue, event that's going on, and find your tickets. Enter the promo code BRFS. Our Back initials. Row, fantasy of BRFS. BRFS. Now, I will tell you, if that does not work, they had our code mixed up yesterday, 
and it was BFRS. BFRS will work if BRFS does not. Hopefully they fixed it, but you will get a discount on your tickets, and you also support the Back Row Fantasy Show as well. I, I wish I knew that. I like their suggestion. If you B- read the Twitter, you would. Hey, first off, there are so many times I get an update, and I'm like, somebody responded to our Hold on a second. What did we post? Oh, we posted. <laughs> That's a good one, Bark. Nice job. <laughs> I mean, you've missed important events like Trump. He responded to one of our tweets. Chad Ochocinco. Dan Marino the other day responded to one of this is all lies. Uh, dude, Don't that, believe you. This that, is all lies. It would have been hilarious. I mean, we've had, what, Carriker, Cummins? Yeah. And... But but for real, Barack Obama did respond to one. He's like, I really like the Backroom Fantasy Show. It's a great program, and I want to listen to it every chance I get. So he did a video, obviously. So I don't believe you. <laughs> okay, so it wasn't him. I like the BFRS, though. I do not. Because the Back Friggin' Row the Show. Back Friggin' Row Show. Whatever, it works. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of uh, sure. It gives us more options. Yeah, things to do. Yeah, just in case you mistype it, you still get your discount. Back freaking yeah. row, back row, back row, back row. Yeah. So, but so, yeah, go ahead and uh, do your do your thing. Go buy some tickets. Help us out. Help yourself out. I want to help you. Help me. Help you. Help me. Help you. That's how it goes. Help me. Help, help you. Me. Show me the money, Jerry. Show me the money. Oh, sorry. Show it to me. You're just coming with me. I am. Oh, good. I'm going with you. Good. Wherever you go. All right. Wherever you go, whatever you do, I will be right here waiting for you. Sorry. And I don't normally. I don't normally get involved in singing, but this was this is touching. That was a touching song. Ugh. Touching tune. I'm a Barbie girl. Stop, there dude. we go. Let's get Stop. to football. Here we go. All right, jump. So, how about that uh, that Rams-Chiefs game in Mexico City? L.A.? L- L- oh, Los Angeles. Los Angeles. L- b- 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 pronounced Los Angeles. Ooh, touche. City of Angels. Mm-hmm. So, man, come on. Was it really the field conditions that Did forced you... it there? I, I saw them. Th- or was it the bad. players complaining about it? Which is a result of the field conditions. I mean, you right. have to understand, like Tyreek Hill, Brandon Cooks, Todd Gurley, Kareem Hunt, they're like, nah, nah, I'm not. I'm the not. best players on the planet are going to go play a football game in your stadium. Yeah. I mean, do you think Pat, Ma- Pat looked- Mahomes could do it like on his knee? So it didn't really matter, but. I'm not sure what the field looked. I, I mean, I saw it. I don't, I have trouble comparing it. I mean, it, 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 it looked. From looked my understanding, dead. it's a soccer pitch, right? Yeah. And they just didn't recondition it after their tournaments. I mean, obviously, soccer is real big in Mexico, uh, particularly compared to American football. But, man, you had an opportunity to have arguably the biggest game of the year year to date. Monstrous city. I mean, I mean Mexico City, oh, tons yeah. of people. Yeah. I, Huge you, draw. And you mess it up. Yeah, I mean, You mess it up. Just, mess it up. You know, you got to do what all these, you know, these neutral site games do whenever, you know, say uh, an SEC team decides they want to play, you know, uh, Va Tech, they go to a neutral site. Like, recondition the field if necessary. Just just do it. it you're going to make enough money to pay back the field conditioning. Yeah. And then some, and then some again. I'd like to see what happens to the money from this week. Not to get too far into that, but... I would like. I, I know the Rams are doing a real cool thing, though. They're giving away a lot of tickets. Don't get me started on money talk. Yeah, they're giving away a oh, lot of these. Get me t- going. They're, God, they're giving away a lot of these tickets to the uh, California uh, first responders and firefighters. Kind of cool. That is cool. Way to make a joke but, in the but, middle of my sentimental piece. Here's the bad part about it. So the, I do the, what I want. I shame you. The air quality in Los Angeles is is, is it, atrocious. But better than Mexico City. <laughs> I don't think there was an air quality problem. It probably is though. And <laughs> there's a the- wildfire raging like 200 miles away yeah. that just keeps blowing south. Like there's smoke. Did you, you guys saw the San Fran game? There's Colombian heroin in the air in Mexico City. You feel great the it whole time a, you're there. It's no Beijing, <clears throat> but it's pretty pretty polluted over there. Oh, it's rough. By the way, you know this is going to happen soon. They're they're going to have a game in China. Like they're they're just expanding all over the globe to put to put these uh, these NFL games out there in different different countries. It's going to happen. China, Japan, someplace 
they're going to have another you know NFL game, not just Mexico City, not just uh, what is it, England. Uh, yeah, London. it'd actually be better if they flew west, even though it's a farther flight over the Pacific, obviously. But you're you're playing a later game technically because i mean we talked about it these games over at wembley stadium over over in uh 9 a.m yeah they're well it's like yeah how awful and would it's it be 6 30 start for like la when when the chargers go over there they're playing at six in the morning technically i just want you to know whenever they play in beijing i'm sick the next day like i didn't make it into work why because i stayed up until two o'clock in the morning to watch the uh, the game in china yeah tough Let's talk some week eleven. Week enough 11. about enough about time zones. Time zones and I like time and, zones. Uh, what, what's the word for it in high school? Pollution? Geography. Geography. <laughs> enough about geography. <laughs> enough about geography. Let's let's talk some games. Okay, let's get into it. All right, let's jump right into it. Somebody give me start me out with the uh, start of the week. Well, are you we gonna, don't, are you don't gonna have a queue up a queue up a, a some sort of sound? Uh, you're gonna bring us into this? And you can complain when you don't do it. And here I thought you guys didn't like him. I love him. I love I love that he did this for us. Yeah, I mean, it's the not so obvious plays of the week, brother. There you Just go. Just out of curiosity, is that the American hero Hulk Hogan or the Hulkamania Hulk Hogan? NWO. Okay, so it's Hollywood. That was NWO right there. Okay, I'm just curious. Yeah, he uh, when he recorded that sounder for us, first he put me through a table. Ooh. Then he leg dropped you and sprayed paint NWO on, you, on your back. Then he did one of these <laughs> to see if anybody was Listening? yelling at him. Uh-huh. Yeah. Did, did he give you one of these and then that and then this? He, me. He, he gave me something. He Hit gave me. me something. Arms, you get to lead off this episode. Oh my gosh. I know. I, I don't, in your one and seven Raiders hat. I don't, I don't know. Or one and eight or whatever. Listen, they are now. still fan. Still fan. Oh, yeah. You can't drop your team. His hit of the week is American Carr. <laughs> Look at me. I'm the Browns now. <laughs> Dang it, man. Dang it. Uh, you know what? Uh, trust the process, right? Trust the process. It's really hard to trust the process right now. I wouldn't trust anything going on in Oakland. Uh, you know what? Still fan. Still fan. I know too many Browns fans to give up on the Raiders now. Mm-hmm. Um, so my not so obvious start of the week, um, Dak Prescott. Hate Dak Prescott I like as it. a football this, this player. This is fun to hear. I I can't stand him, but Dak, you know Dak, what? Dak, 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 Dak. He's productive right now with his legs. Um, so that's adding some points. That's and what she said he's currently over the past five week. Dak Prescott is the number fifteen overall quarterback, and he's going against the third worst pass defense in Atlanta. Dude's going to cause me to lose ten bucks. Yeah. Yeah, because Derek Carr might get benched. But, no, I mean, Carr's putting up a lot of yards in the air, of course, but, you know, he's just not getting in the end zone. Dak's getting it done two different ways, and you know what? You got If you're going to take a chance on rolling out Dak, now's the week. He's uh, Atlanta doesn't have that great of a uh, pass defense. They do get uh, Deion Jones back. They get Deion Jones back. But he's... Who's it, what tight end? Dallas exactly. doesn't use a tight exactly. end. Exactly. So it, it doesn't uh, affect their pass defense much. It does affect their their running game a little bit, but I'm not too worried about that either. Um, but no, it's it's a great matchup for Dak. And if there's an opportunity for him to feast and look like the quote unquote franchise quarterback that they believe him to be, now is going to be the week to do it. So roll out Dak. Amen, brother. Amen. That's exactly where I'm going. I just wanted to hear you say it first. I, I, I can read your notes over here. <laughs> I, want well, I, I write them in crayon, so... <laughs> anytime I... I'm not a diva, but anytime I push the spotlight off of me, there's there's some ancillary benefit for me right. coming from it. I just wanted to hear you say Dak Prescott is the hit of the week, but I do agree. Every, everything you uh, alluded to there... Going up against a bad defense, the, probably the worst pass defense in the league. And Amari Cooper looks resurgent, man. Hasn't had a monstrous game yet. But he's consistent He now. is, Yeah, he's consistent. But he he is creating separation nonstop. We talked about that a yeah. little bit last week. Sometimes Create, a change, a little change will do you good. It's a it's change of scenery, man. They're still throwing the screens to Zeke. Yeah. I mean, look at Golden Tate. A yeah. little change. Went and screwed everything up. Change, I mean, change, small change. sample size, but still, 
Chan- you're not gonna help. You're not gonna help me on that song. Okay. But the other thing with Dak, he's running the football a little bit more, just a little bit more. Not not a, not any yards last week, but he has gotten the end zone three of the last four games on the ground. That's huge. That's huge. Chip in a rushing touchdown from your your quarterback, monstrous. So what, give me Dak. Last two weeks, he's outscored Tom Brady. Am I wrong? Yeah, uh, he's been he's been consistent. Not what, too hard to do at the moment not not too hard to do at the moment tom's tb12 is in a little bit of a slump dak's gonna get it done just touchdown for, slump. for another week give me dak prescott just a touchdown slump old tom uh mine I, you know what i'm glad i'm glad i love it when it works out to where we each get to drop a different name because listen we don't discuss these picks before we go in at it because i don't want to i don't want to change my mind if i would have picked dak i would have just backed arms up with my dak analysis for the week and that's what would have happened. But luckily Chad for me. Chad just never actually researches and whatever I say, if he agrees with, he's like, hey, that's, that's good stuff. There that's we good go. Start. Happens every once who in a while. Your, who's your second guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, the Panthers uh, are crumbling a little bit. The Panthers are having a little bit of problems. Uh, there are a lot of problems uh, against offenses just in general. And I think we have watched Matthew Stafford be mediocre all season long. And Matthew Stafford's not a mediocre quarterback. He is not. He is the Lions team is a mediocre team, but I think against the Panthers this week, I think Stafford gets it rolling. I I'm gonna this is a bark bank call. I'm very confident in this call of three touchdowns this week for Matt Stafford. I, I not anything catas- not anything, you know, out of space. You're not, but three you're not giving touchdowns. Patty Mahomes numbers, but No, he's not getting four or five touchdowns. I hope he does. But I, I am going to take a bark bank guarantee and say Matt Stafford throws three touchdowns this week, and he's going to spread it. It's going to be one for Jones, one for Galladay, and one for Carry On Johnson. So I like I like Stafford a ton this week uh, in a lot of games that are uh, very questionable as to who's going to be your top quarterback this week. Just looking at the games. So I like a Stafford play out of nowhere, especially if you're going up against that guy that's got a better team than you and you know it. Go for the high upside of Stafford and that offense that could get it rolling. Now, Will, I'll agree with you. This this Panthers team is reeling. They're reeling a little bit. But, man, look what happened on Thursday night. They were playing one of the better pass offense, the best wide receiving core in the game between A.B. and Juju on that team. Oh, well, yeah. they that, Yes. So, I mean, they got torched last week. They've been bad all season, talking about the Panthers. Uh, but, man, Stafford with three. I, I can see him get there. It, just, it's going to be a big week. It's just he's due. I mean, he did score get two touchdowns against the Bears last week, and that's a great Bears defense. Yeah. I just, I'm just i saying I don't want to crucify the Panthers defense based on last week only because that was just – I that, get that. that. Big Ben had it rolling. Those receivers were open. Eh. Yeah, the Panthers are on a bad defense, but they – They've been exposed to teams with high octane passing offense, and Detroit has that. They have the potential. It just has not really happened yet. Has not come to fruition. I don't think they're going to win a bunch of games, but I think you're going to see a better offense out of them for the rest of the season. I mean, Matt Stafford has to has some work to to get up. He's I think currently quarterback nineteen, and he pretty much always finishes in the top ten. Like I believe, make he, a push. I think he can get there. Honestly. Um, even if they're, I mean, I think they're pretty much playing for nothing at this point, but why not pat his stats? Hey, it's honestly, still Matt Stafford. Yeah. Honestly, By the way, the first time I've ever owned him in any league ever, and it's the worst season of his, of his career so far. Yeah. That's how it goes. In shallower leagues, you know, 10 team leagues, he might be available on the waiver wire. I mean, it might be a pickup if he's, no, you know, nineteen twenty overall, he's a backup quarterback. Clearly <laughs> play him what QB one this week. I agree with that, Bart. There we go. Just making believers on this show. I'm a believer. I, just, I want him to be good because I going to. I had him. Well, you I, had I, him fin- on his team. I finally, I finally dropped him. I dropped him for Kirk Cousins. Tell us who else you want to be good, preferably at the running back position this week. Well, I believe that the the, uh, the workload has finally went the right way in Green Bay. All right, last okay. three weeks, Aaron Jones got 12 carries, 14 carries, 15 carries consecutively, two targets, four targets, five targets. Seattle's a kind of a middle of the road rushing defense. 
um, they have the ability to actually establish a running game. They're they're leaning on Aaron Jones a little bit more than they ever did before. Songs getting ready to happen. And you know what? I think I think Jones is a solid play this week. I don't expect what he did last week, but I could see him getting over that hundred and getting in the end zone this week. Let me back you up. Aaron Rodgers also is on record as saying that Green Bay needs to get more opportunities to Aaron Jones. And whatever Aaron Rodgers wants, he's going to get. Whatever Rodgers wants, he's going to get it. You know he really wants it. He's going to get it. Whatever Aaron wants, he's going to get it. I don't know what song you're trying to rip off here. Does it matter? But it's It's beautiful. It's it's terrible. But I agree with you. Aaron Rodgers wants to run the ball through Aaron Jones, wants to run the offense through Aaron Jones. It's going to happen. Yeah. They're they're, – Valdez Scantling has been – Really good. A nice surprise. ESB chips in a little here and there. But the fact of the matter remains, they're nicked up. They don't have the receivers that they've had in the past, the veterans, uh, game in, game out. So why wouldn't he want to run through Aaron Jones? I think Aaron Jones is a great bet rest of the season. Beautiful. Oh, are y'all done on Aaron Jones talk? Give me some running back love. Man, I just want to say I don't believe it on on Aaron Jones. I do. I'm Uh. buying it. I'm buying it because they can flip flop just like the 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 Patriots do on running backs. They really can. But I, all right, he's hot. He's a hot back there. I'll go with it. My week eleven, and again, this is a a big bye week. There's a lot of of good running backs shelved yes. this week. So bye bye bye. I'm gonna go with a guy who's a little bit hot. There's not a, going up a decent going up against a decent Colts defense. It's a guy that oh, we love to hate on this show, but it's Derrick Henry, man. He's actually getting touches around the goal line. He scored four touchdowns the last three games out. Going up against the Colts, they're going to try to establish the run and, and feed Mariota's passing game off of the run. We know that's going to go through uh, Dion, but Derrick Henry is vulturing touchdowns. If you don't have an option, you have Derrick Henry on your bench and Derrick Henry is available in these shallower leagues, Go get him. He's going to get in the end zone. I guarantee that he continues his – his uh, makes it four games in a row with the TD. Just like 50 yards, maybe catches the ball. 12-point game. 12-point game out of nowhere for Tarek Henry. <clears throat> That's my deep, deep start of the week. Again, leaving me wide open to take the guy that I want to take as my not-so-obvious start of the week this week at running back. It's Alex Collins. And uh, we haven't mentioned him in a while. Because no. he's bad. Because he's he's not terrible. There's just he's not that great this season. But listen, the Ravens are probably going to be without Joe Flacco. There is discussion as to whether it's going to be Lamar Jackson or RG three. Report today said RG three could be the one that gets the call on game day to start. And I can believe that. I can believe that as well. And I and I do believe that if no matter who starts, there's you're not going to see a thirty plus passing attempt game out of the Ravens this week. And the Bengals like to get beat on the ground. They just like it. Their defensive line comes together, and they're like, man, guys, uh, I know we're supposed to plug the holes, but I want to get penetrated. (laughs) I want to get penetrated, guys. What is on your mind tonight? Let's open them lanes and let let Alex Collins river dance through our gaping hole. That's what they want this week. Hey, it's still so, it's still I mean, safe they, for work. I didn't say one single cuss word. They are nor. the third worst rushing defense yardage wise in the league. They are, and Alex Collins is capable. It just he's kind of like the Lions of the running back world this year. We expected more. He's given us mediocre. It's time for a big game. No better team to do it against than the Bengals. You don't think frickin' Buck Allen's going to vulture all of his touchdowns? Ty Montgomery should play for the Ravens this week. I I don't expect Buck Allen to see the field much, if any. This week, he's a little bit of a liability. Uh, Buck Allen is nasty. A, with Buck carries, he's a little nasty. bit of a liability. Buck Nasty will penetrate you. God, he'll penetrate those. Would holes you stop? In the line. You're making me uncomfortable. Yeah, really. Yes. Talking about penetration <laughs> at the line of defense is making you uncomfortable. You're a football scholar, and you're uncomfortable with penetration <laughs> a fo- a at the football line. Football scholar, he says. Pen- you you call schemes. That. You call formations. You're like, you're going to take the safety off here and put the corner on the outside. And you're going for a nickel. And now you're uncomfortable with me talking about the Ravens getting penetration at the line. Through gaping holes. Have you ever heard an NFL announcer say, look at the gaping <laughs> hole? He just Yes, they say it all the time. All right. I, li- I I like your call. Thank you. 
just not the just way not you the called it. Presentation apparently. <laughs> Listen, uh, I, no, you Marker's maybe got a lot of pent up frustration to... today apparently, and he wants to. Uh, Dude, I'm talking football. Uh, okay. All right. This is this is football talk. All right. Get it. Okay. What wide receiver you got in store? I can't wait to talk about a good tight end. <laughs> what wide receiver you got, Arms? Adam Humphreys. The hump. So. Prior to last week, whenever Godwin had the, the real good game, Humphreys had nine targets, ten targets, eight targets. Godwin's dealing with a uh, an ankle injury right now, so we're not 100% sure on his availability against the Giants. And the Giants are just bad at defense. They're pretty much bad at football in general. Agree. So, I mean... They beat the 49ers, though. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter who plays quarterback for uh, for Tampa Bay. They're going to get some production in the air, um, whether it's Fitzmagic or, you know, they pull him at halftime, put in Jameis. It, one of them end up having a spark. So, whether it's all after the half or whatever it may be, just look for Adam Humph- Humphreys to have, uh, you know, probably eight to ten targets this week. And, you know, I-, I could see him catching five for about 70 yards and a touchdown. All right. Well, y'all are going to get a good chuckle out of uh, my... Please say Michael Gallup. Curtis Samuel? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> this Dude, goes back... Great. Curtis Samuel. This goes back to, like, preseason, like... Yo, uh, yo, really? Jaleel, is Scott, it, Jaleel it, Scott's on IR. Equinemius St. Brown? No, no, no. He didn't Wait. like Equinemius. Remember, we were the uh, is we it were Jay the Mon, ESB Jay guys. Moore? No. Is uh, man. All right, here I'll just throw him out there. Uh, my my start of the week, and really not out of anywhere. He he's been extremely productive over the last five weeks. It's Dante Moncrief. Dante, you don't remember the Don, Dante? I Mon- do now. Never, I, I tried never, to forget. Never heard ever. Tried to forget. He has looked pretty solid. In he does. Recent he, weeks. he does have moments. He's looked pretty good. He's he's kind of been their go to the last couple weeks. He's he, he's absolutely been their go to. Dante Moncrief has slowly become very wide receiver three playable, flex playable uh, in dynasty in, in any league. I mean, the guy has uh, had fifteen targets, ten targets, seven targets. Last week, he only has four, but he gets three for 98 and a touchdown. The guy's getting looks. It's a bad Jacksonville offense, pass offense, but he's their only option right now. We know what the, we pretty much know what's going to happen this game. The Steelers are going get to get up big. They're going to have to throw the football regardless of uh, Leonard Fournette doing what he does on the ground. They're going to have to throw the football at some point this game. Dante Moncrief, I, I expect to have another rock-solid outing get to about 15 fantasy points, whether it's uh, high targets, decent yardage, no touchdown, or just get in the end zone with over a few targets. The guy's going to be involved in this offense, and they're going to need him. Dante Moncrief is a safe wide receiver three safe. flex play. I mean, Ooh. if you really look at his, his game logs. It's up so, and down. Well, the, but the games that they're behind, that they're getting pretty handily beat, so Patriots – I, if I'm not mistaken, I think the Jets beat him. The Chiefs, uh, the Texans, like they're the Colts last yeah, week. He puts up a lot of points, you know, enough for, points to yeah, be. Not, yeah, not he's not putting up thirty, but he's putting up decent points in the games that they're playing from behind. I, I think he's a safe wide receiver. Playing from three. behind, you say? Yeah, I'm just going to give it to you. Excellent, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, excellent. I mean the call. I'm done with Dante Moncrief. Love. Okay. All right. Uh, it's I I hate to call him safe, but I do like the call. Safe safe is is, is pushing it a little bit. It's the not obvious starts of the week. I'll tell part. you what is safe though. Keelan Cole not doing anything, dude. He he hasn't done a thing since week one. He he's, he's, I don't even want to talk about trading George Kittle for Keelan Cole. I wasn't going to. Was it going? Because it, it, it's just I'm simply talking football. I, wide he receiver, has disappeared. I was wide receiver desperate, and and, and make Keelan that Cole, move early, early, early in the season. It's looked like good early. Like Keelan he Cole really is now. Good. I'm not sure he plays football anymore. I'm not. Either. I think Keelan Cole may sell cards in Jacksonville. Well, basically, Dante Moncrief out targets him and out produces him. So that says enough. It says enough. Here's my uh, my not so obvious start of the week this week at wide receiver. I'm going. I I I think I'm going deeper than even you did, Nick. Oh, I'm going to the to the third level of the defense on this one. Yeah. So we t- we talked about this. Uh, Mari Cooper is looking better, more okay. consistent, not tearing the world up, not setting the world on fire, but he has looked better. And you know what? Inconsistent Amari comes back this week, and 
what I believe could possibly be a shootout. A shootout? Against the Falcons. Okay. Falcons have a pretty high-octane offense. Michael Gallup's been chipping in. He hasn't yes. had a big game, he but he's won. been chipping in. One, but it's won. three catches. But ever since then, he has been chipping in. He went from doing absolutely nothing to having a breakout game to going for about three for 50 afterwards in the past few games. Michael Gallup is the beneficiary this week of Amari Cooper going back to inconsistent Amari Cooper just for a week. He'll be back. But I like Michael Gallup this week as a deep play, a flex play. You got guys on by and Michael Gallup's on the waiver in your redraft, or maybe he's even on the waiver in your dynasty leagues. Unlikely, but you've or got if a you lot can, of big names on by. Yeah. If you can still trade, even, I think that Michael Gallup's a guy that you can plug and play as a hope and a prayer. Number three, because I do think he's going to give you some fantasy relevance this week. I'm not going to say safe. I'm not going to say a hundred yard game, but I think five receptions for about 85 yards is and possibly a touchdown is feasible this week against the Falcons defense that should be pushing the ball upfield. Man, I just got to see it. Like, I just, I've got to see something out of Michael Gallup. I, more than any uh, rookie receiver in the league right now, I want Michael Gallup to be a stud. I really do. I he just. What's your reasoning for that? I just, video game numbers. Him and James Washington are like my two, you know, they did it at small schools. What was that name you just said? James. Washington. Sorry, Thank I got you. put the respect on his name. I didn't even have to do it. But I, I want those two guys, for all the production they put up in their senior season of or their final season of college, I, I just want them to be good. It's just it's not there yet. Like, I hope you're right because, like, I drafted uh, Michael Gallup in, like, round 15 of a redraft league, and I had to cut bait on him about three weeks in. Like, I, I had him as, I think, a uh, wide receiver four wide receiver five but i just he was giving me nothing and in week seven he gives you a, a, enough to be like ah, michael gallup could be good and then it's kind of back to it's mm, a glimpse i mean he turned into Corey davis the following week got three receptions for 51 yards and you're like oh, god i i can't I'm not, I'm not comfortable starting michael gallup i want him to be good I, I so want him to be good i'll just do a little quick quick hit on michael gallup uh Ever since uh, their 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 screen guy, their uh, Cole Beasley, no, the guy that Tavon Austin, Tavon. Ever since he went down, that's kind of when Michael Gallup's playing times went up. <clears throat> now it's went up from nothing to a, moderate, a, a moderate, yeah. moderate play. But they're installing the screen. That's who they're throwing quick screens to. Is Michael Gallup? That's where he's getting his, getting his production. And frankly, I do see him being productive within this offense when he's given the opportunity. I, I do like Michael Gallup long term. I think he's gonna take over that Tavon Austin role. They can they can get rid of Tavon Austin. Uh but my, I, I like Michael Gallup where he's going. I don't know mm, not it's safe. a stretch. Not, not safe. safe. It is a stretch. But I long term, like dynasty wise, roster him. Roster him on the taxi squad. I think he's gonna have a good week. You guys ready to get tight? Well, I do want to toss in a couple more names. And you kind of brought this to my attention earlier, just for the possibility of the, I guess, shootout. Uh, names that you're not going to typically play. And I think there are. Curtis Samuel? No. Although he's beating Golden Tate here recently, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, you but, don't have to. But names that you don't, you know, you're not normally going to play. Day Day Westbrook. Um, last two weeks or last two weeks he played, excuse me, six targets and then 10 targets. He's not doing a ton with it, but he is, you know, he's getting some catches. He's gotten to the end zone, you know, a couple of times over the past five weeks. And there's, they're going to have to throw the ball to even be in the game, to even be close to being in the game. Him and Blake Bortles. I mean, shoot. Bortles, oh, shoot. we're talking a lot of garbage time stuff here. I'm not talking like they're going to go out and, you know, dominate from the, the you know, kickoff. Opening snap, yeah. But I think that both of them have an opportunity to be very playable. Think, uh, you know, very cheap. You've spent your money elsewhere. Uh, DFS type plays. I'm feeling you. I'm feeling you. Let's, let's, you want to get tight? You go get tight it ends? tight. Get it right. Get it tight. Get it tight. Get it right. Get it tight. <laughs> done yet? We I found you miss new booty, booty. Get, get it together, together. Bring, bring it back, back to that's me. two bubba sparks references like in a row he's coming back baby dude i love bubba sparks <laughs> i i he's, should he's coming back i should he's basically like a six foot three version of me i mean i love bubba sparks <laughs> except for talent <laughs> other, other than that bubba bubba other than that 
But hey, give, give me your tight end. You got a tight end? Tighten I, it up, I man. Do, I do have a tight end. And, man, we talked about this on the last episode whenever we're talking about Austin Hooper versus who? Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram, get right week. You got the god-awful Buccaneers defense. Evan Ingram's going to be worth the price you pay for him anywhere because he's darn near free in DFS because he's done basically nothing this year. And this is an atrocious. Uh, atrocious Buccaneers defense. Agree. Agree, agree, agree. And, and it got worse, obviously, with uh, Quan Alexander going down, and Kendall Beckwith isn't back yet. All right. I'm, I, I have to go. I got to go deep here. What are you deep. looking at over there? You keep going, sir. All right. I got to go, I gotta go deep here. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do – this is my Derrick Henry of tight ends. I'm just going to go with the hot guy who's getting in the end zone. Uh, Jordan Thomas in Houston. Uh, he's – he. Any relation to Rob? No, nah, yeah, know. Rob Thomas. Is it, I, I don't know. Probably not. Hmm. Jordan Thomas. Hey, he's been hot. He's getting. He's getting looks. He's getting looks in around the red zone. Demarius Thomas comes in. We know what Nook does. It's going to free him up a little bit more. I actually, I'm not. He's not exploding. He's he's not going to have a monster week. But if you're suffering, if you have Kittle on a buy or something like that, go get Jordan Thomas. Play him. I'm gonna. I am. I have Kittle. I'm going to bring Jordan Thomas off my taxi squad, and I'm going to play him this week, hoping for him. a big game against the uh, Redskins. Now, the Redskins have given up yards in the air. I expect them, that trend to continue, and, and Jordan Thomas to be a small part of it, enough to be playable for a bye week. Bye week Kittle. Man, I thought about him. I really did. Before I get to my uh, not-so-obvious start of the week at tight end, I want to tell you a little bit about our other sponsor, my bookie. My bookie. You can go to mybookie.com. You can bet on fantasy football. You can bet on games over, under. There's a litany. That's right. I said it, a litany of things you can bet on at mybookie.com. And if you enter the promo code ROW, R-O-W, like you're rowing a mother freaking boat. I really thought you were just going to be like, I'm a beep. Okay. I, 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 I. I kind of want to beep some stuff out. That'd be fun to have beeps in the show. But no, if you want to save some money, get $25 on top of your first deposit and get your deposit matched, enter the promo code row. A hundred percent match. hundred percent match plus 25. If you go row 25 on the promo code, but you can also just go row on the promo code, get a hundred percent match for sure. I know that promo code is working because I used it and dropped my whole life savings on the Browns for next week. Not really. But mybookie.com, go there, bet, win, thank the back row when you're done. Promo code row R O W. And my tight end of the week is gonna be Ricky Seals Jones. Ricky Seals RSJ. Ricky Seals Jones. Tell us why. Okay, listen, they're playing the Raiders. All right, can we go on to the next position? Yeah, we can uh, uh, you guys want to talk about bus sits? No. Ricky Seals Jones. Rosen's getting a little better each game. Ricky Seals Jones is becoming a little more consistent as far as catching three to four balls a game. And I, I just see a breakout coming for Ricky Seals Jones. He's gotten to the end zone here and there over the past few weeks. I think he's going to do it again. And as we say every friggin' week, I'm even sick of hearing myself say it. The tight end landscape sucks. It's and if terrible. Ricky Seals Jones can score one touchdown, it means he's going to be a top 10 tight end. I like Ricky Seals Jones this week, though. I, I'm not afraid of any Cardinals player, to be honest with you, against the Raiders. If the Nebraska Cornhuskers were playing the Raiders this week, I'd say start all Cornhuskers <laughs> offensive players. I mean, You're welcome, Arms. Hey, you know what? As far as Ricky Seals-Jones goes, I mean, he's had six targets, six targets, four, four, and then nine. I mean, they, they're targeting him. His first game with six targets, he had zero catches, Rosen and they targeted him six coffee. times the next game. Like he, Rosen has no problem finding him. He's a rookie quarterback. Rookie quarterbacks do like that tight end as their safety blanket most of the time. I mean, hey, why not? I mean, no, no one else other than David Johnson do anything on that offense. Finally. Finally. Finally, DJ, putting up a, a big-time fantasy week. Let's – uh. You guys asked for it. I'm going to hit you up with the Sounders all day long. Oh, yeah. It's not so obvious. Sits of the week. It still just blows my mind how much those two superstars sound alike. You know, I I mean, they don't. They don't tell a definite difference. They don't when you watch them on like any other show. 
But on this one, they sound really similar. They must have got together and decided to go with the same growl. I thought maybe whenever you start playing that, he's going to say snap into a Slim Jim, but it's always not so obvious it's the week. Every time. What are the odds? Why? Slapping. Slapping to. Snap into a Slim Rosen. S- snap into a not so obvious sit of the week, bro. You ever seen how Slim Rosen is? He's a slender little fella. He is. A little Slenderman. Doesn't, st- have, doesn't have that NFL body. I still, no. I still don't think he's the answer in Arizona. He's got mom jean body. He's still not a he's still not a winner. Sorry. Hit a weight room. Sorry, Arizona. Sorry. All right. So not so obvious sit of the week. Um Sid Andrew Luck. Whoa. Yeah. What? Yeah. Now, this is primarily for a DFS play. Andrew Luck's a, a great quarterback, but the Titans' defense is one of the best pass defenses in the league. What did they do to the GOAT last week? They shut him down. They shut down Tom Brady. Touchdown wise. Now, Tom Brady's not what he has been in the past, but you think Bill Belichick doesn't you know, prepare well for a game? He does. Yeah. He does. He's, he knows what everyone's going to do, and yet they still shut down Tom Brady. If you can shut down Tom Brady, you can shut down Andrew Luck. It's as simple as that. The Titans' defense is very a very solid defense, and it's a very, very good pass defense. I don't know if you can su- shut down that seven tight end offense. That's a I'll be honest with you. I, I was considering it's, sitting all of the uh, the tight ends for them as well. I, 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 I'd, I'd I play all that, six. I didn't. I didn't go that direction. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Dallas like, Clark's a great play this week. All right. Well, I got a, I got a different quarterback for you, and, uh-huh. and I'm going to go a theme. Uh, continue my theme of looking at the defense, like you just did. I'm going to go Kirk Cousins in Minnesota, going up against that Bears defense. Man, that that pass rush is real. We we talked about. Khalil Mack, everyone talks about Khalil Mack. He is a freight train, a locomotive. He gets a quarterback. He's going to get to kick Like Kirk he's, Cousins. He's untradeable quality. Yeah, he, <laughs> unless you're the John Gruden-led Raiders. Uh, but Kirk Cousins kind of kind of reeling last week, kind of an off game against a bad Lions team. Not last week, but week nine. Uh, coming off their bye. Time to get right? I don't know. I mean, there's get something kind. There's something right. off with uh, the Minnesota pass offense uh, of real recent, and, and they got their biggest test of the season in in Khalil Mack and the Bears. I would go outside of Kirk Cousins. I feel like he finishes well outside the top ten this week in a low scoring game against the Chicago Bears. That's all I got. The opposite. I'm going to go with that. Is he still has a great receiving core. Solid, not great, but solid running backs. Mm-hmm. Um, and they did allow two touchdowns. Whether, you know, I, I didn't see whether it's the first half or second half, whether it's garbage time type points. They did allow two touchdowns to Matthew Stafford. And Kirk Cousins is the superior quarterback at this point in their career versus Matthew Stafford. A- outside of last week, Kirk Cousins has not dropped below 22 fantasy points all season. And the, I mean, the one game that he did is whenever the Bills just smoked the Vikings. Yeah, chalk it. Okay. Make it number two, below okay. twenty points. Mm. Uh, this is uh, I'm sticking to it. They have been trying to establish a run a little bit more too, with Dalvin and between Dalvin and Latavius Murray. So uh, I, I'm just a little leery, leery, little, little, little nervous, nervous of, of Kirk Cousins Love in that, that minute. Nervous. I like it. And, Larry and nervous. By the way, can Kirk I complain Cousin. about something real quick? Go ahead. Yeah. I was going to whether you guys said it was okay or not. If you and were, another word from you, our sponsor. If you are a commissioner, like we've got a we we're fortunate to have a, a very solid commissioner in Den. Like he needs to quit his job and become a professional fantasy football commissioner. Right, Realistically, like that is his calling. <laughs> Denny is a great fantasy football commissioner because he he makes it aware. Like your get bu- to your point. <laughs> your trade deadline yeah. is coming up. You know, make sure. Hey guys, five days till trade deadline. Three days till trade li- day or trade deadline. Twenty four hours. All like right. he lets us know. What's if you up? are a fantasy football commissioner, make sure your league knows when the trade deadline is. Because I play in a couple of them that don't have trade deadlines. You can trade literally to the championship game. You can trade. That's ridiculous. I think so too. Don't like it. But but you can do that. I played in the league that I, I guess wrongfully assumed that the trade deadline was uh, perpetual, never going to happen. And I go to make a trade this week and uh, don't have that ability in my league. I'm like, dude, why why did nobody tell me that there was a trade deadline last week? Yeah. Notification just, is nice. Yeah, just especially like, when you're playing multiple leagues and you don't know. Yeah, I'm at like six leagues, so I I'm gonna go. 
quarterback? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. I have something else on my mind as well, but we'll, we'll definitely have to make it quick. But quarterback, I don't like Matt Ryan this week. What? I'm starting to buy the Kool-Aid that is Dallas being a pretty solid team. And their pass defense has been pretty solid all season. Matt Ryan has been a little hit and miss. Their offenses, we just we don't know who they are. They're not great. They're not bad. We just we don't know who they are. And I think Dallas is going to show us who they are this weekend. I do not think Matt Ryan's going to get it done. I think Dallas is going to win this one fairly handily. And uh, I think that's because Matt Ryan has himself a stanker. I, I, I'm I buying the Kool-Aid that the Stank. Cowboys are a contender in, in the NFC East. They struck the fear into the Philadelphia Eagles uh, this past week. And, and that, that defense, I said it, they they play with their hair on fire. They are absolutely electric to watch. That linebacking core is great. They have that a good secondary. A great linebacking By, core. Byron Jones is the best bump and run corner in the league. Like He's not scared of anyone who lines up against him. Football prodigy bump and run drop. Yeah, uh, Byron, Byron Jones is going to frustrate the heck out of Julio, though his timing off it's going to lean heavily on calvin ridley and muhammad sanu and the second on the second reads and things like that so i i like it i looked at matt matt ryan but i could see that game getting into a little bit of a a, not a shootout but just 20s 30s both teams getting 20s 30s something like that they're going to make julio's jersey spell julio a w h o dash l e o who who julio who Julio. Uh, I mean, uh, he still gets like 120 yards. Give, <laughs> yeah, he'll the, be give fine. the guy credit. He'll be fine. Like, there's nobody who's stopping Julio Jones from a yardage and reception standpoint. He, he might not get in the end zone, but that's actually his offensive coordinator that's preventing that. So, True. Um, no, I, yeah, is what it is. Um, yeah. So, running back it up, baby. Running who, back. Who, who, who we sitting this week in Arms' world? I am. I'm going to sit. Don't say Doug Martin. Uh, okay, I won't say no. I'm not playing him anyway. Um, I'm actually going to sit vo- both Vikings running backs. Um, don't like how that that is at this point. You know what's Latavius? What you know what's the roles between Latavius Dalvin? Doesn't really matter to me because the Bears' rushing defense is still not allowed a rushing touchdown. That's unbelievable. It is week eleven. No running back has crossed the plane on the ground. Is it possible to do it in there? Sure. No penetration into the end zone. But that that is it this is becoming a historically great run defense that the Bears have assembled. And guys, I'm telling you right now, if Dalvin and Latavius were a hundred dollars a piece in uh, in DFS where three thousand's the minimum, I'm still not paying the hundred for either one of them. Whoa. It's not going to happen for them because I mean, they may get 50 yards, one of them or the other, but neither one of them's getting in the end zone. Um, mm, I, I I can't say I, I disagree. I mean, Kirk Cousins was my sit of the week. I think it is going to be an off week for the Minnesota offense. So it, the only way you're beating the Bears is where, through the air. All right, all right, but it's going to be tough to tough to get the ball off against. Yeah, no, that, I mean it, that it's an awesome defense. All right. I'm going to go Marlon Mack or Neem Hines or they're not going to play Jordan Wilkins over the, over either of those two consistently in Indianapolis. But uh, Marlon Mack against the Titans. Titans have just been good, man. They've just been rock solid against the run, against the pass. You say sit Andrew Luck and counter me on the run, my sit of the week with the running back. I'm going to counter you and say Marlon Mack's going to have a rough game. Hard to get going against this Titans defense. I mean, it's just a good defense as a whole. There's no standout. Wesley Woodyard's been great as a linebacker. Jarrell Casey's been good on their defensive line. But overall, it's a solid defensive unit. You have everyone chipping in, playing, what is it you like to say, assignment and alignment football. Yeah, every, and that's and that's Mike Variable. Mm-hmm. That, that, that's a product of the system. That's a product of what he wants to do defensively. I mean, honestly, and I, I, I kind of disagree with the term they used last week of, you know, Foxborough South. But Mike Vrabel, I mean, if anybody knows the defense, I believe he's the longest tenured linebacker Bill Belichick ever had. Yeah. If anybody knows how to run that defense, it's Mike Vrabel. And and they're hitting their peak. This is scary. Like they're a lot of people were talking about the Titans as a legitimate AFC contender. Now I I don't believe I'm not buying the hype. A lot of people are just saying I I don't believe the hype, but I believe they win a playoff game. They get they get to the playoffs. They win a playoff game. They're they're they are that good. Their defense is that good. Marlon Mack's going to struggle to get it going. He struggled against the Jaguars. I think it continues against the Titans. Hmm. I'm going to give you mine. 
And uh, we got some fool's gold going on last week. Everybody got all excited. I watched the uh, the football groups that I reside in talking about Leonard Fournette. Oh, Leonard Fournette. Touchdowns, touchdowns, touchdowns. Listen, Steelers are going to get up. They're going to get up on them. That's that cool. that defense is not exactly doing what we thought they were. They're not who we thought they were. Pittsburgh is going to get up on them. LeGarrette, LeGarrette Blunt. Yes, that he's the second coming of LeGarrette Blunt. Leonard Fournette is. Oh, he's on. not going to get it going Let's this week. Let's not get carried away. He's not going to get it going this week. He's not going to have the opportunity to get it going because Blake Bortles is going to have to bring out the Blake show and, and toss that rock. Not going to be Leonard Fournette this week. Maybe he gets into the end zone, but if he does, it's going to be sub 50 yards total rushing. Not going to happen this week for Leonard Fournette. Man, I caught him last week. I caught that was my sit of the week last week, and he just showed me up, dude. He showed me up. So I, I don't know. I believe in Leonard Fournette. He is healthy. Them sitting him that long time has has done a little bit for his health. He was healthy. We he, don't know if he is this game. All right, all right. Who you got a wide we'll receiver see. there, Arms? Wide receiver. I, I kind of alluded to it earlier, but Golden Tate is the sixty seventh receiver in Goldie. PPR over Ugh. the last five weeks. Curtis Samuel is sixty two. Think about that for one second. Now this is a point per game, you know. So I'm I'm accounting in bye weeks and everything. Points per game, Golden Tate is 67th. Like get, he's a name get, at this get, point. Yeah, get over the name and just realize Golden Tate right now is not what he's been traditionally. He's still tough to tackle. He's just not getting looks. Yeah, I mean, even whenever he's getting the targets, he was just doing not a lot with them. I mean it. You've just got to you got to look past Golden Tate, find a better option. This is the week that I'm going to play. You know, someone that you have had on your bench, like a Christian Kirk. See someone like Christian Christian Kirk, Kirk. Christian Kirk um, someone like that to where uh, M- MVS Mar- uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling. Marquez. One of those guys. You got to move on from Golden Tate. Get one of those guys in the game and and be happy that you did it. The reality of Golden Tate right now is he's the fourth passing option on that offense. I mean, it goes Zach Ertz, it goes Alshon Jeffrey, it goes Nelson Aguilar, and then Golden Tate. He's just not going to get the looks. He's not going to garner the targets. I got a cousin named Garner. He, he's just not. Get him out of your <laughs> fantasy. Story. Get him out of your fantasy lineup. Play someone with a higher upside like a Marquez Valdez Scandling. Marquez Valdez Scandling. Perfect. I'll tell you who this week will die at the end of his sword. Actually, they don't play each other. But my set of the week at the wide receiver position is uh, his first name is Allen. And unlike last week, I don't think this week that you can do it. You cannot duplicate. Just don't go chasing Robinson. His stats from last (laughs) week are just not what we are used to. I'm going to counter you on this one. But go. Why? Listen, Allen Robinson has one breakout game the whole season. He's been good, though. And we, we all, do we think that all of a sudden he's just going to be Allen Robinson from 2006? I do. When he was good in 2006? When he was playing for the Jaguars and Mark Brunel was throwing him passes? That's not true. That's not true! He hasn't been in the league that long. Didn't Blaine Gabbert, wasn't that his I quarterback back, back then? <laughs> I'm serious. Was, I think it was Blaine Gabbert. But, uh... Listen, I, I'm not buying. I don't buy Allen Robinson. If anything, I'm playing Anthony Miller this week. Anthony Miller's done a string of games. Now, that makes at high, sense. At high production. But I am not, I'm not saying the Bears' offense is going to suffer. I'm saying don't go chasing Robinson's. Don't I, go chasing them stats this week because he's not going to put two touchdowns on the board this week. He's been a double-digit guy all year. Congratulations yeah, he, for not, giving us 10 points. Shoot higher. I I agree. He's not going to he's not going to have two touchdown games. That, that was a, it wasn't a fluke as against a bad Lions defense, but he he's been good, man. He's been good. Vikings are going to he, he may struggle but this week. Other than last week, he's been a he's been a mind. wide receiver. He's been 3-4. Three, three, he's been Sammy Watkins without the touchdowns. Okay. From last year. All right. You're going to tear me up on mine because I, I, I went with one of the elitists, and I'm, I'm going pretty deep here, but Ooh, deep. this is more of a DFS alert. DFS alert. Do we have a sound bit? No? Okay. Brian Hux, where are you at? I know. DFS alert. Keenan Allen's going to struggle against the Broncos. 
it's not that he struggles against good pass rushes. It's that that offensive line does. It's Philip Rivers doesn't have time to get the ball out of his hands to Keenan Allen. In the games where they go up against an elite pass rush, the Rams uh, tore that line apart. The Broncos are that good. Bradley Chubb and Von Miller get after quarterbacks. It's going to be a struggle for Keenan Allen to get going. It, well, it's going to be a struggle for Philip Rivers to get going too. Keenan Allen. I think Melvin Gordon is their their road to victory in this game. Keenan Allen may get to those double digits. I say he outproduces Allen Robinson. I'm just saying DFS alert on Keenan Allen. Going to struggle a little bit, not have the typical Keenan Allen week. He's only broke 100 yards twice this season. I mean, I I tend to agree. I'm not a huge Keenan. Two touchdowns. I'm not a huge Keenan Allen fan, and I haven't been. And that's what I I said during the off season, like. The guy's got to get, what, 13 touchdowns for him to, I guess last year, excuse me, he had six. But he had 1,400 yards, which is an absolute high point in his career. He's just, he's not that guy anymore. He's just not. And there's too many options there. They've got Tyrell Williams, Mike Williams. I mean, an absolute monster in Melvin Gordon who's having a career year. You just don't, they don't need him to win. They don't. They're, they're, they're winning through Melvin Gordon. It's just a DFS alert more for me. He's still going to put up wide receiver three, wide receiver two numbers, uh, but you're going to have to pay to get him in DFS. So. By the way, he's so bald. I'm sorry. I just pulled up his pro, his picture on my fantasy league. He's got worse a worse hairline than I do. Very bald. Very I, bald. I shaved my head. My hairline starts at the top of my shirt in the back. His helmet fits probably pretty nice, though. Oh, yes. Probably pretty nicely. Let's, uh, let's tight end it up again. Not so obvious sits, and I'm going to be honest with you. I don't have anything that I have conviction about this week with the not so obvious sit at tight end. I hope one of you guys do. The only I, I can't give you a sit him in your dynasty league or sit him in your redraft, but I can give you a sit him in DFS, and that's Zach Ertz. Whoa, oh, no way! The Saints are still the best passing defense against the tight end in the league. They they just are. I mean, he had a monstrous game last week. A little bit more Golden Tate, and I'm not saying Golden Tate's going to have a great week, but a little Oof. bit more Golden Tate. Oof. I know. disapprove this message. <laughs> but let's also realize the Eagles aren't that great anymore. So I I just don't think Zach Ertz I, is. I, I I know Zach Ertz is great, but Zach Ertz what is. I'm getting at is there are other tight ends in DFS that are going to be significantly cheaper than Zach Ertz this week that are going to put up similar or better production. Zach Ertz will not be worth the price in DFS. Uh, All right, I hope you got something better for me than that. Nick. Whew, good lord, I do. That I, that was a air ball. You actually shot, would have made bro. that if that wasn't full. Well, I'm good. Like, All right, I'm going to go with the number six tied in on the season, baby. Our our boy, our fave, Austin Hooper. He, I'm with you. That th- was my call. Yeah, this is a sit all, all day long. Uh, if you have another option, go ahead. Don't, don't bank on him in DFS. Don't bank on him having a big game in any sort of league. That Cowboys defense, we already talked about it. Don't have to say a lot about it. It's a good – it, 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 it's a good defense. It's an active linebacking core. The safeties play well. It's going to be a frustrating game for Matt Matt Ryan. It's going to be even more frustrating for Austin Hooper because he is going to get absolutely lost in what they're trying to do against the Dallas Cowboys. Stay away from Austin Cooper. Hooper as good as he has been all year long. Can I can I add this? You know the Titans still haven't allowed 300 yards or a passing touchdown in total to a tight end this year. But in, the, in total. The in the Colts, the Colts who have nine tight ends, nine tight ends. I mean, you. I mean, the, the but thing, it, that to me, the Colts are still going to try to do Colts things. They're going to throw it to the tight end. Okay, I mean they I, have I, to. I, I mean that's just what they do. I'm, I'm okay. All right, all right. All right. So does that round it out? It pretty much does. You, you but I Austin do. Hooper yeah, Austin Hooper definitely for the same said, reasons. I'm sorry, I said the the Titans. I'm I meant the same. My bad. Let's uh let's do this in a very quick fashion. Very quick. I, I want to throw out IDP. The Saints have allowed one. Uh, IDP wise, Leighton Vander Esch has arrived. Oh, he arrived. So he arrived weeks ago. He's so good. But he had like 13 total tackles last week, and I think they're finally seeing that he is a much better option than Sean Lee this week. He's a he's. If you have him in your league, you must start him every single week from here on out in IDP. Frank Clark uh, for the Seahawks. I like him against Aaron Rodgers in what's going to be what we think might be a run-heavy game. 
The reason I like him Mm -hmm. is because he's still going to be trying to get to Aaron Rodgers. There's going to be play action fakes off the running game. I think Rodgers goes down on one of those play action fakes due to Frank Clark. Uh, and Landon Collins is back to Landon Collins. You, If you were sitting him at all, don't. Landon Collins is still one of the best defensive backs in the league. And uh, don't forget about Sean Smith. I think Sean Smith in that possible shootout is going to have a double-digit tackle game this week. Just some IDP love real quick at everybody. All right, I'll hit, hit you up with mine. By the way, I apologize. They, um, Ertz is going to get Saints, who's the third best and only allowed one pa- one receiving touchdown. Right? I don't – even if they were the first best. I'm, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm just never saying it's straying a, away from Ertz. It's just a really good <laughs> defense against tight ends. He's so good. Zach Ertz is, is the is best, the, without question, tight end in the league. Mm, I wouldn't say without question. He's right without there with Travis question. Kelsey. I, I think Ertz is better. Other than one week, it's been Kelsey and him neck and neck. It's not without question. Anyway, For me, it's without question. If I, if I had a choice and a platter Break there, it up. Break it up. It's Ertz every single time. <laughs> Anyhow, so my not-so-obvious uh, start of the week on defense, a linebacker, I'm going to go with Jatavis Brown. I mean, Denzel Perryman's out. That just When he was out last year, Jatavis Brown was a better linebacker. Not great. But but productive from a fantasy standpoint, from from compared to especially what he's been so far this year, he's not been good. So um, Jatavis Brown's going to have a decent week, especially against a Broncos team that wants to establish the run. Um, JPP at defensive end almost call, almost said that too. He's JPP's obvious, been so. god awful the last two weeks. I think one assist one t- assisted tackle both weeks in a row. Like That's it's been tough. it's awful. Tough love in IDP land. Tough love. But he's going against his old team. He's going against the most sackable quarterback in the league, in Eli Manning. Sackable. JPP. Sackable. He's going sackable. to. He's going to get home this week. He, he's going to. He's going to do just fine. And um, then can I have a sackable? And then I have to stack these two because one of them is uh, has a, has an injury may not be available. So uh, Justin Evans for Tampa Bay or Isaiah Johnson if Justin Evans can't go. Eli Manning. He can find the defensive back better than anybody. Um, if, no, that's not true. Oh, Nate, Nate Peterman. That's right. That's he's not, he's, he's no. not in the league though anymore. So, <laughs> so it's Eli. Yeah, it's Eli. So, um, one of those two is going to have a good safety. week, particularly based on the fact that they're going to they're trying to find more Evan Ingram. So, a few tackles added into it. Uh, probably, most likely, an interception. Um, those are my three not so obvious starts of the week. I'm just going. I'll give you three, and they're all going to be linebackers from two different teams. Bernardrick McKinney going up against AP and the Redskins. They want to run the football. They want to establish the run. Bernardrick Bernardrick McKinney has been a a, their tackling machine. We we love tackling machine. He's a tackling machine. Tackling fuel. And uh, he's going to eat up some AP. Now AP is still good. I mean he's proven a lot to me this year. But Bernardrick McKinney is going to find a lot of tackles in this game. And then the other team I'm going with. I just talked about Philip Rivers and that offensive line struggling a little bit against superior pass rush i think von miller and bradley chubb on both sides of the, both outside linebackers are going to get to the quarterback one of them twice both have very productive games from an idp standpoint and i do not endorse sack linebackers but in this game sacks they gonna get to him they gonna get them they gonna get to him and they're gonna bring him down and they're gonna accumulate some sacks play 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 long to end the show i do have one sit and it's just it's a huge name that y- people are still hanging on to. It just it's Cam Jordan. In the last five weeks, he's the number one seventy first overall defensive lineman. Man, I like almost, such a huge name for him to be so bad this year. I almost predicted that he was going to have a decent game. <laughs> he's been awful, man. I agree, he's been awful. But this is a game to get it going. All right, I want, we'll go deep. I want thirty seconds from each of you, if you could. Uh, a topic that came up in a discussion on Twitter with one of our listeners, tanking. 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 This is tanking season. It is. This, this is when everybody's vying for that first overall pick. Dynasty League tanking? Yes. Nit, how do you feel about tanking? So they'll suck for love and suck let, for Saquon? How about let him 30 go? 30 seconds. Could, how about let, can you Arms, go how first? how you feel about tanking? Because I have a different scenario for tanking. I, I I don't believe in tanking. You uh, you roll out your best team every week. You I know you paid your league fee. I entirely get that. 
But and it's your team. You can do whatever you want. But you are affecting other people's possible yes. money. Yes. You've got to put forth an effort. And you know what? If your team happens to be good enough to move into the third overall pick instead of the first overall pick, then so be it. Play your best team because this is supposed to be competition. Nobody likes it whenever the Spurs go out and sit all their stars against another star team. Nobody likes it whenever, you know, the you know the uh, the Rams if they sit everyone in week 17. Nobody wants to see that. I now, missed the playoffs on the last game of the season 3 years ago because of tanking. Not because I won my last game and the person that tanked should have won theirs, but they wanted that pick. It messes with the whole league it's, structure. It's unethical. It is. Don't American. But let me give you a different scenario for tanking. We're talking about tanking to get the number one pick, so arms are gonna really make you mad in our league. So I beat you last week. I have a one game lead on you. The head to head for the wild card is the tiebreaker. If we go into la- the last week of the season, I'm one game up. Arms has a great team. I don't want to play him. I'd rather play the team ahead of me. Do you see where I'm going with this? <laughs> oh, that's do, true. Do, do, thou see we're getting into strategy. This, this is more strategy. It, it is tank. Do I tank the last game of the season <laughs> for me to hold on to the wild like, like it's it's The scenario that plays out is that I could, if I win the last game, I could win my division – Therefore, and Arms has a tiebreaker on that guy. So if he's the wild card. Yeah, I would win the division and play Arms. A good team. Teams are... My team's improved. I've improved through Trey, but I, his is scary. His As is opposed scary. to playing the team ahead of you, which is what, Snow Beasts? Yeah, or do, or do I go into that week, a game up on Arms, allow him to win the division, tank it, and take the wild card knowing that I play this bad team that's in first place. You hate me right it's now, uneth- don't you? It's unethical. It's the same well, scenario. That's strategy. Is, I, th- I want to win championships. This is, uh, this, this is different. Then you should be able to beat me. This is different. I did. I earned that right. Then, then, the head then to you head. should be able to beat me in the playoffs if your team's better. <laughs> you think about that, Tank. This, this is different. I'm, I, I'm, don't the, you hate that I've already thought about that? The, the wheels have turned. I've, I've played the there. mathematics. That's upset. But see, here's no, no. It's just control my own destiny. Yeah. That's all I mean, that you're is. You're knocking him out of the playoffs. To, to not <laughs> face him. I mean, it's there, his, his team averages. We'll say his team averages 180 points a game. This other team area. I'm chasing averages 160. I know it's a little different from that, but Arms' team is superior. I would rather face the other team, and I can control that through tanking. <laughs> assuming, assuming I have the one game lead on Arms. <laughs> The end of the season is going to be very interesting on the See, show. Now, he gonna hate me. Now, now hold on. <laughs> he hate me. So if if this happens, if, uh, the, if, if I think if, you if, know the answer. I was to that. just trying to talk me into no, not no, doing no. That. If this happens, you guys know I'm staying in the league. <laughs> but in 99% of the leagues, somebody that's causing someone oh, yeah. to quit. Somebody's going to leave. That's a that's someone quitting over that because they would make it over oh, that. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that that that's a a quit inducing oh, thing. If if that happens, will you change your name to like the the Tijuana Tanks? <laughs> like, Tijuana Tanks team. Oh, arms hates me even more uh, for being good last week because I control the wild card. I just, the wild card comes to me. I I just got to win out. Simple as that. Just got to win out. That's what it is. Now, if you win out, you still and I win out, and he wins out. You're still out. He can't win out. You play him. But we would... And I've got the tiebreaker on him. Okay. Yeah, you're right. So if me and him are tied, I'm in. Thank you. Speaking of winning out. We 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 on game call? Thanks for last... What? Game calls? We were perfect last week. No. No game calls this week. I can't. I can't. We stretched it out (laughs) too long. Stretch. Happy show. Thanks for listening. And be sure to give us a review. Made arms bad. You're such a sketchy little beep. <laughs> His playoff line.